the Crush FTP User Manager has advanced features to make working with users easy to do. You can manage many users at once, changing settings in a batch update that applies to everyone, control inheritance, and grouping, all from the User Manager. I'm going to show you a few examples here. I'm going to log in and go to the User Manager. If your user manager had 100 or 200 or a few thousand users, finding a particular username could be tedious. But with the filter, you can quickly type in the first few characters of a username and the user list will be filtered down to just that user. You can also hit hotkeys to do a quick find to locate items as well. Once a user is loaded, you can again quick filter to find certain items, such as public key encryption, or to find the customizations, you can also use either the quick find or the quick filter. The default view in the user manager shows you all the settings that that user has that are overriding the default settings. The default settings come from the default user. If you want to see all of the settings that a user has, even though they're not currently visible, you can click the Show All button. Now you can see that there are a lot more settings being displayed. To the left and at the top of each header section, it tells you where that setting is being inherited from. In this case, they're currently all set to be coming from the default user because they have not been overridden. Some settings, such as the username and the VFS area to control what files the user can access, by default are not showing a username in their heading section. This is because these are being overridden by this user. If I uncheck the check mark to the left of a setting, you'll see that it starts showing the default user because it's inheriting from the default user then. If I put a check mark next to another user, it removes the default user because now we are overriding the setting. Usually you will hide the defaults because you won't care about most of the settings. The quick jump lets you jump to a particular section and when you utilize a quick jump it will unhide all the items in that section. So you still don't have to see all the settings but when you're interested in controlling something in the web interface for example choosing a quick jump to web interface will show you all the web interface settings or a quick jump to restrictions will show you all the settings in restrictions while keeping the rest of the settings in your user hidden as they normally were. For some settings you may want them always to be visible even if you haven't configured them yet. For example, if you're always going to set an email address on a user, you may want to make the section be sticky. When a section is sticky it will show always even if you haven't searched for that item and you're not overriding it. So right now this user is still inheriting from the default, but it's showing the email section because we've made that sticky. If I switch to another user, again, I will see the email section because we've made that sticky. It applies across all users. There are two additional parts to managing users. You can group users and you can use inheritance. If I want to take these four users here and put them into a new group, I can select them, go to groups by right clicking, and add a new group. I'm putting them in the users group. Now we have a group called the users. If we show all users, we see all of our users. If we see users who aren't in a group, it'll show you which users have not been added to a group yet. And if we choose a particular user, we can also see in the group list that they're a member of the users group. It's denoted by the asterisk next to the group name. Inheritance is separate from grouping. So for example, if user1 has access to a particular folder,
If we give user1 access to the accounting folder, that doesn't mean that everyone in the group called the users will have access to the accounting folder. If I go to user2, you can see that they do not have access to the accounting folder. But if, for example, you wanted user2 to have the same virtual file system that user1 has, plus their own customizations, you can do that as well. So user2 is going to have access to the HR folder, and we're going to link in a virtual file system using VFS linking from user1. So now user2 has the same virtual file system that user1 has, the accounting folder, as well as their new folder, the HR folder. But you may want to go another step further. So every time that you add a user into the users group, that they automatically get access to a particular folder. To do this, you make a user that has the same name as the group name that you created, in this case, the users. So I'm going to add a user called the users. And I'm going to give the users access to the IT folder with a couple files. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm also going to link the user back to themselves. The reason we do this is because the inheritance is going to inherit the VFS linking, which points the user at the user's virtual file system which is what we defined above with the KB2, KB256, and IT folder. So now as we make a new user called user5, and we add them into the group, the users, you will see that user5 also gets the inheritance from the users. So user5 is inheriting the linked virtual file system that says user5 gets access to the user's virtual files. Plus, we can assign user5 its own custom files as well. You can control inheritance on a one-off basis as well. So we could switch over to one of our users not in this group called my user and select that we want them to inherit from user one and now this user will inherit from the default user and then user one the way that inheritance works is kind of like layers so the base layer is the default the default settings are all configured here in the user manager. You can set up whatever you want to have for defaults. Next, the inheritance is set so that user1 is being applied on top of the default. So the base layer was default, then any settings that user1 has defined override what was on the default. And finally, any settings that you set on the user that you're editing right now will override what was on top of that. So in this case, we have a three layer inheritance that's been configured. First defaults, then user one, then my user. You can use the system to create very complex inheritance structures for users. This can greatly simplify how you configure your settings. You could have a user such as an IT user and give them a few settings and any time that you wanted people to inherit those settings, you just add that inheritance into their user. You may have also noticed as we've been going along that Crush FTP keeps adding different users up here in the most visited section. This is useful when you may come in the user manager and frequently edit a particular user, or while setting them up, you need to keep making settings again and again to one user as you're trying to get the settings the way that you'd like them. These quick keys can be activated using the Alt key or Option key to quickly pull up the user to switch back and forth between them as you're working with them.
In this case, I'm pressing option one to get my user and option two to get user one. This is just one of the many things that Crush FTP does to try to help you with your management of your users. The user manager can also do batch editing on users. So if I had a particular setting that I wanted to set on a group of users, you can do that easily as well. I'm going to switch my group to the users and I'm going to choose a user. Now I'm going to pick a setting that I want to apply to everybody in the group. I want everyone to have a minimum download speed of 100 kilobyte per second. Next to the checkbox that enabled the section is a little user icon with a drop down arrow. You can apply this setting to just this user, which is what we've done by not even selecting this, as well as applying it to everyone that we have selected or everyone in the list. In this case, my list is limited to the group called the users, so I'm going to apply it to everybody in the list. If I go look at any of the other users now, you can see that the minimum download speed has been configured for 100 kilobyte per second. You can also select just a few users. So if I want to say user 4 and user 5 are going to have a different setting for the minimum download speed and they're going to have 500 kilobyte per second, I can apply this to just the selected users in the list. Now if I look at user 3, you can tell that they still have the 100 kilobyte, but if I look at user 4 or user 5, you can see that they have the setting configured for 500 kilobyte. All of the settings in the user manager allow you to apply configuration like this. Some specific settings, such as events, go a few steps further. Events allow you to link in settings from other users. So you could link a setting to a particular generic user who happens to have an event configured and then apply this configuration to all users. Then all users will have that linked event configured on their user. So if I make an event on user 1, And then for my rest, for the rest of the users, I go to events and link it to user one who had the event called test. Now I can apply that to all my selected users and now they all will be inheriting this one event. Any changes I make on the test event in user one are automatically referenced by all other users. This is also used in the inheritance section so that if you wanted to apply the current inheritance to all your users or all selected users, you can do that as well. Or for removing a particular user from the inheritance, again, you can apply that to this user or all users and the selected users as well.